everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, very excited to have a very special guest tonight for Campus to Career Crossroads, Sharon Berkman from Berkman International joining us. As many of you know, the Berkman career exploration is really at the core of our work that we do and, and really can't go without that guidance, GPS, as you've heard me say many times. But tonight being really a special treat, I believe, having the opportunity to have Sharon her father started this. Sharon's been at the company over 20 years in a chairwoman, chairwoman role now currently. Um, just has a ton of extensive knowledge. I know I've had great conversations with Sharon and just really a special treat tonight. Um, one thing I do ask of those kindly joining the call, um, Sharon's going to give us a, a great maybe 15 minute overview or so. And she would appreciate any questions you have too. She can certainly add a lot of value. So uh, with her level of experience and being with Berkman all these years in different roles and seeing the company grow, um, she certainly welcomes your questions and feedback as she gives you a deeper overview, a deeper perspective than probably I've shared going through the Berkman assessments for uh, your son or daughter. So without further ado, it, it's truly a great honor. Thank you again, Sharon, for joining us tonight and being so gracious with your time. Oh, thank you, Jason. It's, it's an honor and a privilege because uh, you have centered your uh, your whole business practice on something that I think is one of the most critical pieces of what Berkman International is all about. And that, I mean, the, the your young people, our young people are absolutely so valuable in the future the, of, of all of us. Um, I'm the mother of three and grandmother of five now, but um, I, I you know, in a family business, if any of you are involved in family businesses or know people who are, you're probably aware that for most of us, we we grow up with with parents that that started if they started the company and they're struggling entrepreneurs. You hear family talk at the dinner table, and so I, you know when people say how long have you been with Berkman, the real answer is all my life. But uh, the informal answer is I became the CEO in 2002. And just a few months ago, I'm working on semi-transitioning, but it's so exciting what what we what my dad and mom started all those years ago that it's you know it's still still something I want to do uh, quite a few hours a week. And just to give you a quick uh, thumbnail story of how it all got started, my father was a bomber pilot during the Second World War, flew B-17s. And what he noticed is that when they would come back from, and he, he flew 19 different missions, and each mission had a mandatory debrief when he would return from, from this very dangerous mission. And what he began as a young 24-year-old to notice, uh, was 24 when he got out, but you know even younger than that, he saw that each of the nine crewmen would describe the events of what had just transpired in their own special way. They, they, they zeroed in on different parts of the mission. You know, some would be looking more at the, at the technical side and others more geared to, to the people and the emotional side of what they had just endured together. The good news is that uh, just, just so you, you sleep well tonight, all nine of them made it back alive and live to a ripe old age. But what that did, that opportunity that he had during the Second World War, really inspired him to come back and study this new exciting field of social psychology on the GI Bill. And uh, so now he's, he's doing something that he, he really, he was a people, he was a deep introvert, but a people watcher and a listener. And what he noticed is how important it was, not just for people as a psychologist to teach them to understand themselves, but also to understand how they saw the world around them and what they were interested in. And so all this conspired to help him create the questions that ultimately became the Berkman Method. It wasn't very long after he, he began the social science part of it, understanding self and understanding others, putting those two those two perceptions that are so powerful into one kind of vision of what how people interacted with with each other and also how they did optimal self-care and self-management he began he put all that together and then within a number of a uh, short number of years really 
they added a third dimension was what are you interested in doing if all jobs were the same pay and uh, it and skills not required what do you just simply enjoy what what brings you the most fulfillment and that became the interest portion of the Berkman so when a person takes the Berkman questionnaire and most of us do it in about half an hour we know that from our data science what they're getting back is this three-dimensional view of how I see myself, how I see others, why that's so important, and what are the kind of things that are going to bring me the most fulfillment in, in, a, in a career, in a profession. And, and this is the, we happen to be the only assessment that actually puts all of that into one really concise view of what is a potential and, and good career direction for anybody of any age. But in this case, we're talking about our young people. Uh, what I hear so often is uh, from parents, parents will oftentimes look at security as, as, as understandable. It's also so important to realize that if you have a, a drive, a curiosity for a certain kind of work, and are not allowed to do that, no matter how smart you are, and smart people can do most anything, but no matter how clever and, and intelligent you are, if you're sitting, as they say, on the wrong seat on the bus, ultimately you're either gonna have burnout or you're gonna be frustrated. And we all know that's not a recipe for good emotional and mental health and physical health for that matter. So when the Berkman helps you see so clearly the, the particular motivations, the specific interests that your, your, your young adult is going to thrive on. Um, it's, it's, we don't tell them exactly what to do, but we, we really are so excited to at least point them in, in a possible direction where they're going to find fulfillment, engagement, and we really hope some satisfying success. Uh, I, I don't know, because of time, I don't want to go into too much detail about our history, but I would love to know, Jason, what, what questions you have, and also, that looks like a lot of wonderful names in there. I just see <laughs> a sea of black and, and white names, but um, I would love to take any questions that they may have. One, one thing before we jump into that one question, I think, too, to help families, there's, as you mentioned, I think, which is really interesting and why I chose Berkman being selective in the assessments we use and for our clients and looking out for their best interest, the data science, the psychology behind this and the people that on go at your company, which is really going from a family business to an international company. That's but maybe right. if you could talk a little bit about the, the behind the scenes that people don't see after their son or daughter takes the assessment of, of how you know, there's a really dedicated team of a lot of specialists to ensure and calibrate. So yes. maybe that's one thing maybe yep. to help provide a perspective too, Sharon. Yeah, and we have maybe a slightly unusual business model. Our home office is about 40 people in Houston, Texas. That's uh, Dad grew up in Texas and went to University of Texas for his doctorate. So when, uh, when I was a six-week-old baby, they moved from Austin, where UT is, to Houston, because even, even back in the 50s, university, uh, excuse me, Houston was more of a business oriented city. So for, he didn't call himself a young uh, entrepreneur, but as I look back on it, that's clearly what he was. And because as I alluded to a few minutes ago, social psychology was, it's been around now for decades, but back then it was not understood at all. And it was considered frankly, a rather radical concept to take um, psychology, which had prior to that time been seen primarily in a therapeutic way. If you need mental health counseling, you know, you went to a psychiatrist or you went to a psychologist. What, what they did that was new, and it started in the Ivy League schools, but it, and there, were, there were ideas floated much earlier than the 50s, but it started really culminating, coming into focus after the Second World War. When, when industry was taking off. And that is that if you, don't, if, you, if you don't wait until there's a problem, if you do preventive care, as we do now with all of our dentistry, you can avoid a lot of problems that might occur later on. 
And so this radical concept of saying, look, we can use psychology for, for quote unquote, normal functioning people in the workplace, and we can help them find even better career fit, better use of their talents. And we can, as, the, as Jim Collins said in his classic, good to great, you can take a, a person from a good to a great level if you know more about what's really motivating them and how to set them up for success rather than accidentally with the, all the best of intentions, uh, put them in a position where they're not likely to be happy or successful. Uh, we are now in 23 languages all over the world. The way our, our business works is we uh, rely on people like Jason and his enterprise there in Pittsburgh to be our voices, our arms and legs out in the field. And, and many of our, our consultants live literally all over the world. I'll be going to Germany to speak at a universe, some universities over there in September. Looking forward to that because I haven't been since you know, pre-COVID, as, as most of us haven't traveled for a while. But um, it really, we, we just, we can work with people at all ages, at all levels. And our trained consultants uh, are, are the people, the people that go out and do work like Jason does are, is, are the reason why I think Berkman has stayed alive for 72 years and in September will be 73. As, as a company since we were incorporated. Congratulations on that. It's certainly impressive, the, the growth and evolution. And so it truly is a team. And, and I know you have data scientists and people behind this. And, and maybe one question to help provide perspective a little bit. Obviously, you know Berkman, the career exploration well. If you were more, let's say, as a parent tonight on this call, and, and we have this tool and we talk about using it short-term, long-term, things mm -hmm. like that, how would you, again, kind of, looking at things 360, kind of recommend to utilize this tool to get maximum benefit out of it beyond certainly college planning. We've talked about things like that, but maybe if you could add a few thoughts on that for a couple minutes too, Sharon. Well, I think one of the insights that oftentimes surprises people is I think as human beings, we naturally have kind of built-in assumption that if we like it, then other people like it too. You know, if we see it a certain way, then of course that's whatever normal is. In psychometric terms, the, the, when we talk about norms, all that is is a bell curve average. Uh, an average is interesting, uh, but you know a, a 90 and a 10 can average out in the middle and it really doesn't tell you anything. But the fact is that we do have certain trends and norms that we monitor constantly in terms of how the Berkman is tracking have a good team of researchers and psychometricians on staff here. And we also monitor what's coming in internationally from, from students and, and employees and executives all over the world. Uh, but I, I think that the, the biggest impact for people that are just starting out and thinking about which way do I go is to realize that we nobody is able to do all things well. Uh, I think we all we realize that, but that what you look, what you learn from the Berkman map is if I really focus in on where my Berkman strengths lie, I can not only see where I can be most effective, but if I have maybe that information about a, a friend or colleague or a parent, I can see where I'm different in hopefully an understanding, comprehensive way, excuse me, appreciative way. So and we the, the original name that my father had for the Berkman method, and I think this is significant, Jason, is a test of social comprehension. And so, and, and to me, the word comprehension is synonymous with the word understanding. And so understanding that if I, I have these particular interests, some of my interests are just going to be something that brings me joy on the weekend or in my personal time. And some of them, Hopefully, if we're lucky, at least one, two, or maybe three or four even happen to be built in to my college majors or my, hopefully even more importantly, the career. And maybe, maybe the classroom, lots of our people that are brilliant are not classroom learners. And, and that doesn't mean they aren't super intelligent. 
they have a different kind of interest and a different kind of intelligence. And these people are critically needed in today's world. They may be the people that are fixing the airplane we're riding on. You know, they're, they're the people that learn the trade, but they are oftentimes miserable in a, in a traditional classroom setting. They will, you know, welders get paid really well these days, but we've seen cases where the parent got the idea that the only two jobs that would work for their student is you can be a doctor or a lawyer, or, you know, you can be an accountant or, a, or a, 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 again, a, maybe um, an executive. That may be absolutely the right place for you, but the Berkman gives you a confirmation of what, whether you have similarities in terms of your temperament and your interests that really align with people that we see that have tenure and, and we presume some significant satisfaction in all those careers. We're the only assessment that also links all of these interests into the US Department of Labor Occupational Outlook website. So there is a rich treasure trove there of no charge, free information for all of us who would like to use that as well as, a, as a, an interesting resource. I'm, I think I'm wandering around, Jason, but what other questions, uh, any, anything specific that you'd like me to cover? I get so excited. There's just so much when you got 72 years of history here. Well, one question we have from the chat, um, and this is a, a great family where had a chance to work with their daughter who's a senior and they have a younger uh, sibling and she's going to take the Berkman. Uh -huh. um, and she's uh, going to be a junior next year in high school to give you a perspective. Their question was, and is there any preparation to achieve the maximum benefit in taking the assessment? Oh, no. The, the, what's, what's really interesting to me is that the questions are so simple. There's no need to do any prep, you, you, except don't be tired and don't be distracted. You know, and take it, to, uh, set aside, a, the prep should be, finding at least a 30, 45 minute window of time where you can be relaxed and, and focused and, and uninterrupted. And for best results, you just wanna take these simple questions, go with your first instinct and have fun with it. But the questions are disarmingly simple and very, frankly, this is kind of a, an interesting backstory. Years ago, when, when my sister was about seven and dad was doing some really significant research uh, on the international level. They also received a grant, a, a science grant to do some, some studies with, with people that were in, men that were incarcerated at the time to see if they could help these, these gentlemen. And uh, what they actually learned is that many of them struggled with, with book reading. And many of them, if they you know, had, had been in prison since they were young, you know, never really finished their education. So anyway, the, uh, the upshot of it was that the Berkman questions were written for an adult level. It was assumed it was gonna be for the workplace. So the assumption was at least 18 or 21 and up. And it included conversational questions that were on a typical, uh, that a typical adult would expect and could answer back in, in, in the day. This was the 60s by this time. And what happened is that they, uh, they, for a while, they had a simplified questionnaire and then they had the regular questionnaire the, uh, that they'd been using for a number of years until my dad's chief psychometrician, Dr. Roy Mefford said, Roger, you, you know, for research, you really should just be using one and anybody can go from a complex reading of the questionnaire to a simpler one. And so let's just use what they were calling at that time, the simplified version of the questions. Well, what's been brilliant about that is it translates so much more readily into other languages. Like, we've got some, some ones that have been tough for our, our team are Thai, Arabic, uh, Korean, Japanese, Chinese. I mean, it, those that are not typical, like we German, Spanish, French, that wasn't, French was only hard because we had Canadian French and Parisian French, <laughs> but that's another story. Anyway, uh, what they realized is that these questions can be very simple and yet very, very effective. 
And so that that was changed back in the 60s when my dad used my baby sister to see if she could understand those words. And sure enough, when she did, he rewrote the questions. What people say more often than not, I think the most common surprising uh, statement that I hear is, I'm surprised that you got all that information from those seemingly really simple questions. The word it always starts with an S. Sometimes it's not so friendly. Sometimes it's silly or stupid, but it's simple. And that's because they're very direct and straightforward, very easy to understand. Occasionally people will say, well, it seemed like you were asking a similar thing more than once. Yes, that's what psychometricians do because the more times you answer it in a certain direction, the more intensity it builds up for a more reliable response, I mean, uh, question, I mean, what's the word, a more reliable report to come back. So, you know, there's, if you only answer 16 questions, you will not get the comprehensiveness that you get from the 298 you take on the Berkman. But because they're so simple, and, and, and if you just, you shouldn't overthink it, don't, you know, don't dwell on any one question. The computer tells us that the average person can, does the questionnaire in a little over 30 minutes. Some of the very slow decision makers might angst over it a little bit and take 45 or, or so. But really, for best results, you, you go with the first thing that pops into your head and just keep moving. But do stay focused if you're a young person taking it. No need for any homework ahead of time. Just I, I always say when I send out a questionnaire, for best results, go with your first instincts and have fun with it, period. And he should be able to do it in about half an hour, which is pretty, pretty efficient for all the information you can get back from it. Super. Great response, Sharon. And certainly if others have questions, I know we have a couple here. Certainly, please feel free to throw those into the mm -hmm. chat box. Sharon will be happy to talk about those. And one thing maybe to talk about is, is another question may populate, Sharon, um, maybe to put you on the spot, but I know you're always a great candor for this. And maybe to share with everybody, too, for clarity on the call, and, and I shared this with, with Sharon a while ago, assessments were game-changing to me 25 when I was in admissions, and I didn't use the Berkman, but we used something comparable. And it was interesting to see how I thought and didn't realize everybody didn't think like me. That was a pretty big revelation at age 25. And and I think, Sharon, where I'll, I'll maybe joke with you, I know you mentioned your husband being in different quadrants, probably not reading your book, but I think there's an important <laughs> lesson that we don't talk about as much in art. We like to give young people a sense of who they are, but maybe talking about how to interact with the different color zones and, and how we're wired for those different color zones and, and how Berkman, to me, one of the magic and the power of it is it's used by top companies to build high performance teams. But maybe, you know, again, we don't dwell on that as much as I'd like, but maybe if you could share a, a few thoughts on that side of it, Sharon. Well, I think that, you know, it's not much of a stretch to realize that we each have our, our special unique set of gifts and no two are identical. And yet, um, we, you know, we oftentimes find it very easy to relate to people that share at least one or more of our top interest points. And yet every successful organization at the end of the day can only be, every team or, or a company really, can be successful if they have diversity of personalities and diversity of interests that are helping to keep everything in, in motion for that company. Even in a family, you can talk to parents, and I don't know, I'd love to hear from the parents on, on this call, but if you have more than one child, you quickly realize that they come preloaded with a lot, a lot that is just there from birth, from the first cry. It becomes clearer and clearer as the child grows up. What, what they gravitate toward, what really interests them, what brings them pleasure, joy, uh, what keeps them engaged, whether it's at school or for fun. Uh, but, but, you know, you realize pretty quickly that, that there's a, you, you do your best at tending that garden that you call your child, uh, but you don't get to necessarily pick what, what they ultimately are going to choose. You just... I think the, the parent's job is to make sure that we do everything we can to allow them to thrive. Again, I go back to my natural examples that I like so much in, in, in nature. If you want to do, if you want to have a successful garden, 
you realize that you've got to plant your trees, your flowers in a place where they get the right amount of sun, shade, water, etc. I think that that is a parallel to parenting in that uh, you may not get to pick the climate, you may not even get to pick all the landscaping, but you do get to take care of it. And Berkman hopefully is, is a, a real uh, snapshot of what's going to be the most effective caregiving treatment for that child so that we set them up on a path where they're most likely to find overall fulfillment for the longest period of time. Super. No, thank you. And again, if anybody has, uh, oh, we have a question coming in here too. Um, I'll let you tackle that if you saw it in the chat box yes. there. He said, yeah, well, well, actually, what that's an interesting question. There's sort of two prongs to that. One is that um, we, we can't just willy nilly, as much as I'd love to, go into our interest and just change the names because uh, our psychometricians are purists. And they said, you know, without all the proper research, which is always very slow, we, you know, we've all just gotten through years of COVID. And uh, if you've ever done research, you know, you don't just make a conclusion and change it tomorrow. You have to do all the background work to validate that conclusion and to prove that in fact, it's accurate. So we have, we have updated some, a lot of the language um, with, and, and done our best to keep pure the intent of the original question. We know that because of, for example, we, we changed a number of years ago, we changed mechanical to technical. Now, I would still argue that a computer is still a machine, but we don't call it that. We call it technology now. And, and yet there is still, you know, there, there's a, a parallel kind of interest. So very often people that are interested in gadgets and machinery, it will translate to lots of different options for them. Uh, but we do, as far as the, the questionnaire itself, and the re results coming in, it is monitored and tracked constantly. And even though it's harder than you think to just willy nilly make verbal changes, again, without doing all the proper preparation and research behind it, uh, we try to keep as current as we can without uh, upsetting the apple cart and damaging anything. For, uh, and if any of you have ever lived or gone to Europe, you know that maintaining, like I lived in Oxford, England for a while, and they were constantly working on the Middle E, the medieval buildings, because they were so, they were so important to Oxford, but yet at the same time, they required constant maintenance. That's kind of an example of what we do in monitoring those results on a regular basis. I don't know if I answered the question specifically enough, but if I didn't, then uh, ask again, and, and I'll try to be more exacting. No, I think uh, that gives us a perspective. Again, I know your team seems to constantly be looking at this, as you mentioned too, Sharon. So what would be a couple takeaways you think, maybe beyond um, the way I say things too a little bit, a couple mm -hmm. key takeaways to using, let's say, a couple long-term benefits to the career exploration report for, for parents and students on the call here tonight too? Well, you know, I don't know how many of you have seen uh, friends or students that they, if they don't have some real sense of, of kind of where they're headed long term, they either end up getting discouraged because they bounce around and they change majors. And that's never all that much fun generally for the parents or the student. Even our, our, our lead psychometrician, Dr. Waddlington, said, how do you had access to the Berkman career information years ago when he was a college student, it, it wouldn't have taken him five years to get through his first degree because he kept changing majors. So I think that one of the things that you you really, you can gain that, that, that affirmation that these, while I don't think anything you learn is ever wasted, at the same time, we don't want to spin our wheels and you don't want to see your freshman getting depressed or burned out because they, they got there and then what they signed up for is not the classes they're really getting. Now, again, you know, there's so much variety out there, so many different kinds of schools, but the Berkman also 
can help the counselor, people like Jason, advise to, you know, is that is that a person who's likely to thrive in a in a big state school, or would they be maybe happier in a smaller liberal arts college, or would they be happier going to some sort of trade training where they're learning particular hands-on skills, which are again very employable and very valuable. Oh, great point with that. Why, if I may ask one thing though, add perspective, I think, why did your company, which again is, is really innovative from other assessments out there, and one of the reasons I was attracted to it early on, mm -hmm. um, the job families, my next move, why did you make that connection different than a lot of assessments that may give you an overview, but not connect to job families? Why did, maybe if you could help everybody understand why you added a job families, why you made the connection to ONET? Uh, I think that came at, that started back as, as long ago as the 90s. And uh, the thinking was that we had to connect people to actual jobs in the marketplace rather than just a sort of a hypothetical idea. So it was it was to make it more actionable, more specific. And even um, on, on on some of our overview reports, we we don't necessarily list every single one but we give them the top top six matches because every single job family i i wish i had the actual number but i'm just going to take a guess i know that within each united states department of labor job family there are probably thousands of different breakdowns of, of different applications and even as, as most of you know there's all kinds of accountants there's all kinds of lawyer specialties all kinds of medical specialties uh, there's all kinds of um, engineers, and and they're very different in terms of what they do day to day. So that ability to go in and sort of really dissect and break it down, I think that's where we we do differentiate ourselves from from the rest of the more and more assessments out there all the time. But I've never found one yet that links that that synthesizes all of this. Uh, personal, pers what people know is personality information into things that are actionable in terms of what do I do that fits not only my temperament and but also the areas that that are going to give me the most energy. Our interests are what charge our batteries. We live in a world where you have to plug a device in daily or it go the batteries go down. Well, Berkman interests. And the, and the way that, that they all conspire together with our views, our perceptions of self and others that you get from the Berkman, that, you know, with the colors, that is such a helpful compass, if you will, to say, go here, not there. And you're much more likely to find the kind of position and the kind of environment where, where you will thrive and and. You know, we we don't cover all the bases like relationships too are terribly important, but that can be done at a later date with um, with more, you know, going back to coaches and counselors and learning more as they mature. Right now, just making sure that they're headed the right direction is the key. And Jason, you provide that so so beautifully for them. No, oh, thank you. And again, we, as I jokingly say, and our clients here too, I think of this truly like career GPS. One area that Berkman, I too, that you make a great point. Interest is the first starting point. Again, it charges us mm -hmm. and excites us. And um, again, I kind of try to share that with young people too, because, you know, for example, being an accountant for me would take me half the day. I would be tired <laughs> out. I would be exhausted. It's not the right fit. I uh, wanted to talk about needs though, because I feel needs are an underrated part of the assessment that I do like to talk about. So maybe if you could touch on the needs section a little bit. Because I don't think people think a lot about what they need from the work environment too to do their best work, similar to interest. And I try to share that. And and I know it's tougher for our high school people in particular. You go from one class to the next. You don't have a lot of choice in what uh, what you'd like maybe that environment to be. But I think that's a powerful part of the assessment. So if you could touch on the need part, Sharon. Yes, that. thank you, Jason. The needs really. If you ask my father, uh, and by the way, he did live to be ninety five passed away in 2014, but I feel like everything that he believes so strongly in his legacy, it's it's my joy to carry that torch and I think it's alive and well. And he would be so excited today 
to, to be hearing what you're doing. But the meats are what my father would say is the secret sauce of the Berkman. Uh, what we know is that, you know, people, we're, we're as humans, we need to fit in. We, we don't want the tribe to banish us. So we have this thing that this aspect of our temperament that is called social desirability. You know, we, we mostly, I don't want to say we have a mask on, but, but we figure out our usual is, is what we know is our best way to show up so we interact successfully with other people as we must do. We get along with others. We work as a team. We get our job done. It's all positive. It's all good. And it's all natural. And that, that getting back to my, you know, tr my, my favorite analogy, the tree, because it's so easy. That usual behavior, how we show up, is the tree from the ground up. So you can see, I mean, is it in, in Berkman shorthand, is it a red style, blue, yellow, green? <laughs> Excuse me, is it a, an oak or a, an elm? But there's something really important to that tree that's holding it up, that's giving it its nourishment, that's keeping it alive, frankly. And that's its complex root system that you don't actually see. What Berkman is able to provide for us that is totally unique to Berkman. And I will say it's why we've lasted 72 years. And that is those root systems, those needs. And, and, and interest, by the way, are needs. They are just as, we need a, a way to have an outlet for our top interests as much as we need sleep, exercise, nutrition, all the above. And, and when, when purpose and needs align, uh, and, and with, whether it's you know the, the, the place you choose to go for your education, the path you take for your career, when people are happy, you know, they would say it doesn't feel like work. There's always going to be tedium. You know, work work's not easy all the time. But as you put it, said, Jace, when you're in the wrong seat on the bus, work is demoralizing and exhausting. When you're doing what you love, the time does fly by. And I can say, you know, it flies by for me on a, on a typical day. I just go, oh, wait a minute. It's already the day's gone already, but I'm having so much fun. And so how can that be? And, and that's the goal that my dad and I would have for every single student out there, every person. And especially now as we're zeroing in on the importance of guiding our young students and our young people into the right directions for their optimal, getting their, their roots as healthy as possible and getting their needs met, including interests and including temperament to align. No, that's helpful. Again, I always find that page. And, and probably another piece I think that's really powerful too that we try to utilize, and maybe if you can share a few thoughts, uh, certainly talking about the learning style, because I do think that dovetails into the college setting. Mm -hmm. That's a page I think that's really important to look at, certainly for the initial review, yeah. but the learning style page. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up too. Because what I'm, I'm noticing, thankfully, more and more attention being paid to the fact that not every single young person out there is going to be happy in a traditional classroom. And, and I told Jason when we had our, our little prep call the other day, I am married to a very successful human being who had an international career singing grand opera, if you can believe it. He won a Grammy. He sang at the Metropolitan Opera in New York, Berlin, all over, literally all over the world, Australia. But he, he went to one of the best music schools in the nation and only lasted three semesters because he's not a classroom learner. Uh, his, his solution was because he had this wonderful voice, he ended up going into apprentice programs where they, they learn just by doing. And so different learning styles, some people learn by taking the machine apart and, and, and they have the intuition to put it back together again, something I do not have. If it's mechanical, I call my husband. Uh, but uh, others have a great gift for language and writing, and others have a great gift for design. So Berkman helps them see where where's my my foremost strength, so that I can make sure that if if at all possible, that really needs to be included in the in the job I do day to day. And if 
it doesn't have to be a perfect fit, but if it's at least there in some form or another, it's going to be, they're going to be much happier and more engaged. There are fields though, and, and notoriously the arts, the fine arts are probably the hardest for, for people to find paying jobs. That would be art, literature, music. So what we, we advise people there, be sure you include it in your personal time. Might be more fun that way, frankly, if, if it's not, if you don't have the pressure of earning a paycheck, but whether it's playing in a band or singing with a choir, or whether it's <laughs> decorating your house with high artistic interest or your garden, make sure, or it's how, how, how high outdoor interest is what I'm trying to say, getting carried away here. If you have high outdoor interest, but you, uh, you have to work indoors, then by all means, Go out on the weekend, hike, camp, garden, do things that give you that fulfillment and try to have an office window and some plants in the room. Even that little bit actually makes a difference, believe it or not. Do we have a question? This group is pretty quiet, Jason. <laughs> uh, we've got them quiet tonight. So but uh, <laughs> luckily I, I did get a few shared to me in advance and uh, um, maybe some more come through in the chat. But one thing I did want to ask to provide that big level perspective for everybody in the call, Berkman's obviously used by top companies. Could you maybe talk about how, again, the career components, obviously a passion of mine. You know, I want to see young people go into the careers that are those great fits. But um, could you talk about how Berkman is used by top companies and give people just a quick, you know, compliment perspective on, on the power of this and how it can be used in a different application too? You know, I'm not being flippant when I go to some sort of dinner party or networking event and people say, well, Sharon, um, at Berkman, wh what's your target market? <clears throat> and I can say quite honestly, anywhere you have at least two people working together. <laughs> so uh, but so basically, whether it's I whether it's a small, medium or large organization, Berkman is used uh, from sometimes the the selection process but I am going to put a caveat there. When it comes to selection, Berkman is, is a helpful way to see how appropriate the, the fit looks on Berkman to the job that is being filled. And it's not the only thing. You know, it has to be part of the total package for hiring of resume, experience, interview, all the normal hiring, recruiting uh, tools that are available. So we, we never, ever want somebody to do a thumbs up or thumbs down based solely on the Berkman. That said, uh, if you're looking at the, like maybe the top three for a position, having a Berkman sure does help mm -hmm. or, you know, however you want to screen. But so for on and then onboarding, um, making sure that once they arrive in a in a college or in a in a company, that person is um, put in, as I was saying earlier, in, in, the, in a position where their, their talents are utilized as fully as possible. And then uh, with teams, they were, it, it's probably one of the number one applications is the teams usually consisting of anywhere from three, three to five or even seven to nine. When you get bigger than that, you've got different teams and um, you've got a whole division. What what I love to see is in a company, if we do have some that use it across the board and there they can actually see a an aerial view of data, which shows what kind of industry they are. Are they are they leaning too heavy on just one side of the map? Do they need to expand that diversity of personality by hiring more people that bring more of a, of a fresher, more balanced perspective? So there's teams. And then finally, there's, of course, there's executive coaching. And then, and just coaching in general, there is uh, then at some point when people, oh, career pathing, this is really important. We still, we still have many situations where a person does so well in their job, in their role, and then higher up, the supervisor says, you know, John or Susie, you did so well, I'm gonna promote you to this other job and it ends up being a role where it doesn't align with their Berkman. And now all of a sudden, a very good employee is frustrated or burned out because they didn't do the proper, really, they didn't do the proper intelligence to survey uh, what is going to be the best career path. 
for that individual. And so I would say career pathing is another really important level uh, of using the Berkman within the, an organization. And then finally, now that we are all living so much longer, many people retire, but they don't want to be put out to pasture. They want to be active. They may take a secondary career. They may take part-time work doing something that they just really enjoy. So, you know, maybe don't, they don't retire, they rewire. Um, or it, and now they, they've got the freedom to volunteer some to the nonprofits they love and use their, their Berkman talents in that way. Uh, but, but succession planning then, because hopefully the company they just left is going to still need to figure out how they fill that role. So succession planning is another one of the primary ways that Berkman is used within organizations. Oh, the other one is mergers and acquisitions. Uh, that can be difficult if anybody's ever been through that. Uh, you, can, you can find that there's a, there's a whole different culture in one company versus another company. So M&As are another really good way that our coaches will go in and help, help on both sides with Berkman information. I think that pretty well covers a lot of, oh, we've done it for couples counseling, um, <laughs> for married couples or for engaged couples. Uh, if you can get the engaged couples to settle down and not just worry about the wedding and the honeymoon, uh, but then what we found with a lot of our couples counseling, with the, the people that, that get Berkman certified and decide to do that, is that sometimes it helps to have been married or been together, at least dated, uh, and, and had the knowledge of, of, of each other's behaviors for at least three or four years. And, and then it's more meaningful than if you just met them a couple months ago. It might be interesting, but how, uh, how much you would really be able to take away is um, is probably better when you've had a little bit longer time to get to know that significant other. That gives me a reminder. I've been bugging my wife to do this, Sharon. So I will uh, get back on that. We we certainly okay. by time wise, but she's. So I'm uh, going to write that down, Jason. <laughs> I know. I, I'll get back on that. She's uh, she just likes to use my assessment against me on a teasing note, but oh, uh, yeah, no, no. But you want to have that dialogue and that. Again, there, there are ways that my husband's different from me that intellectually, I know it's really important. For I, He's very linear in his thinking and I'm pretty global. And sometimes uh, my global I, inability to kind of juggle a bunch of things is very useful. And other times it, it just comes across to him as disorganized. But sometimes I think he's a little one track minded, but here's the good part of that. I know once I get him on a project, he's like a heat seeking missile. And so, if I, if I can keep looking at that glass as half full with my spouse and not, you know, not criticize him for the things that make him actually a great compliment for me. So it, that's where I go back to salt and pepper. You know, who wants two peppers or two salts? We, we really need each other to be different in some ways. We have common interests. And oh, that's the other thing with couples or with people that work together, say two founders in a company, they have to understand that their contrasting needs and talents are key to the success of the company. I like to say there would not be an Apple organization, an Apple computer, if there hadn't been Steve Wozniak as well as Steve Jobs. Interesting. One question that came in the chat here too, Sharon, I'd um, uh, like to hear your perspective on how the skills are used to motivate people. Um, maybe if you could talk about how maybe interest and skills could be used to, to motivate people from looking at their assessment as well. Yeah, um, let me say right up front, Berkman has no way to measure intelligence with the Berkman. We have another assessment that does that, that does cognitive. But the, the bulk of what we do is we measure what is going to be motivating and engaging. And we, we have to put a strong clarification on that, that we have no way to actually know whether they have talent or skill in that area. The only thing that I can say on behalf of that is, as human beings, when we love something, the likelihood of our being able to continue working at it and staying happy and engaged goes way up. You know, but as we all know, there you see us on a singing contest, there are people that think they can sing and they probably would do well to be karaoke singers, but they're not going to have a professional career. 
but that's okay. If you know they have another career during the day, they can enjoy doing it for fun on the side. And I always say, don't downplay how critical that is to your well-being. I don't know if I already said this. I I know I mentioned it to you, but we had a really a strong consultant at Boeing for years, and I love a phrase that he used. He said, Sharon, I call our interests vitamins for the soul. And and I would say whether it's something you do for fun or whether it's something you do in your job, it's it's equally as important. But if it's in your job, you have to have skills at it or you won't last in the job. So it has to be something again that that you learn to do and you learn to do it well. And and hopefully then you will have that satisfaction. But we know people, for example, that run companies and uh, great story, true story. Some years ago, I was talking to one of our consultants in Atlanta and she said, let me tell you about uh, a, a, a company that I was working with. It was growing very, very fast. The young founder was uh, going gangbusters with his team. I think it was it was linked to software somehow. And uh, he was doing really well, but he was also getting pretty burned out. And he was probably in his 30s by this time. And she looked at his Berkman report and she said, I see you have like a 95, 99, whatever it was, 90 something interest in music. But I know that has nothing to do with the job you're doing. Talk to me about that. And when when he did, he said to her, you know, when when I was in college and, and younger in high school, college and a little bit after I played in a band, just a bunch of guys that we got together for fun. And I had so such such satisfaction doing that. But right now, honestly, I just don't have time for it. And she said, you know, let's do a 90 day challenge. I'm going to ask you for the next 90 days. I want you at least. Uh, every couple of weeks or so, you, you, if you're still in touch with these guys, and he said, yes, I am, and, and they still live in the city. She said, well, why don't you get them back together, even if you guys just get together in the garage and just play for fun? I'm going to challenge you to carve out some time for that, and I want you to tell me at the end of the next several months how you're doing, whether that time was well spent, was it useful? So fast forward, probably guess what I'm going to say. He looked at his his growth chart for the company, and it actually not only did it not go down, it continued to escalate at an even faster pace. And he now is not in danger of literally burning himself out because he wasn't including one of those really powerful, important interests. Didn't have to be his paying job, but it was important that he make time for it on his own. No, it's a really, uh, really great point as well. We'll see if there's any other questions in closing. I, I do have one. I want to be fair to your time here and see yeah. if uh, it's been flying yeah. along and, and super entertaining and engaging as always, Sharon. Um, maybe one thing to talk about, I think, and, and certainly if a question comes in, we'll certainly address it. I've always been in, impressed how your company uh, in the email signatures has their Berkman color map, their interest, usual behavior, needs, and stress. Mm -hmm. And I joke with clients sometimes about asking and saying, what do you think mine is? Because I do think it's healthy for young people to start to think in that terms of where other people situate in those color quadrants, but maybe to touch on how long you've been doing that and, and probably the, the benefits of that, kind of putting that color mapping out for yeah. everybody to okay. see within the yeah, company. In closing, I want to say, I, I thank you for mentioning stress because I didn't say anything about that, but that is also, we get the feedback we get from our clients is that stress is one of the, to them, and I see why, one of the most important parts of the Berkman. And I say that because uh, most of us know that when we're driving a vehicle, we're driving a car, truck, whatever, uh, if, if a warning light flashes on the dashboard, check engine now, low tire pressure, whatever, low gas, we pull over and we, we do something about it. When Berkman stress is described, what that is for us as humans is the warning light on the dashboard. So what I mean by that is, Stress is not a given, it, it's situational, but it's important. Each of us registers our, our stressors and our degrees of stress based on our own temperament, our own interests, our own results. And so it's unique to that individual, but it's important to, as, as a 
person who wants to be the best versions of ourselves, it's really important to know how to recognize that stress, to see it for what it is, and then do the appropriate self-management or self-care to deal with it. So that's a really important part of, I think, again, why Berkman is useful. Um, but the other part of your question was how long have the colors been around? No, how long your, I know in your company email signatures, you kind of put everybody's Berkman yeah. mapping out yeah. there, which I think is yeah. a really yeah. interesting touch. I haven't done that with my email signature just yet to scare everybody, but. Uh, I started that about 15 years ago now, 10, 15 years, it's been a long time. But I, I came across an old name tag when I was cleaning out a drawer the other day. And when we first started putting colors on, it was on a name tag. I saw, I noticed it was little stickers, little red, blue, and but now of course it's printed automatically. But uh, and we put it on the doors at our office, by the way, yeah. and and along with several other things. But so that you have a snapshot when you walk into someone's office, it's a very easy, visible, non-judgmental reminder of if if I if I'm talking to a red, I know, cut to the chase. You don't not need to go into too much detail. Sharon, you know, you can cut out a lot of the metaphors, but just get straight to the point and they'll they'll appreciate that. <laughs> so, uh, or if, if yellow, if, if you can make sure you, you're taking care of the details and you may be looking at the numerical side of that equation, the things that they really um, value that are important to them, it, it gives you a, a shorthand for a reminder to see if you can relate to them in their terms and talk their language as closely as possible. So we've been doing that for quite a while. The colors really were, they started in the 70s as a shorthand to make complicated information a little easier for people to wrap their brains around. Now they're, they're not detailed, but they're useful as a shorthand. Understood. No, I think it's really interesting to have that quick aerial mm -hmm. snapshot of who you're yeah. talking to, as you said, and you mentioned the reds, the yellows, maybe just to touch on the green and the blues, just for maybe in closing their, their overviews, as I always talk about this, but to get maybe your thoughts in the last uh, minute or two. Yeah. Okay, so what I, what I generally say when I look at the map, we've got the blues are the ones that love to come up with the idea. But let's think, if we were today starting a brand new company, uh, so I've got this great idea, Jason. I'm gonna I'm gonna create a company, and here's my concept. So that's the blue thinking. But oh, wait a minute! I've got to get people. I got to get them excited about this. I need greens. I need to be. I need greens who are persuasive and can get angel investors talked into this. So they are the ones that are gifted at getting the engagement of more than one or two people. And that's what you've got to have. You've got to have that excitement. In, in, in the religious community, we call it evangelism. In companies, we call it business development or sales. Um, so now, okay, now we've thought it up, we've talked it up, that's the green. Then, oh, wait a minute. Okay, well, now we need technology. We need, a, we need a building. We need a structure. So the reds are the guys that make it into a reality. And whether it's going into the production side of it or whether literally building it from from the desk and the and the, the structure of the actual building, that's all encompassed in that make it happen kind of redness that goes with that particular quadrant. But this is huge. I mean, we're talking lots of variety within each one. Okay, so we thought it up, we talked it up, we built it. Oh, wait a minute. One more critical part of that compass, or if you will, one more leg of the table to hold it up. And that is, once we've done all those other things, Who's going to make sure it runs smoothly? Who's going to take care of those critical administrative details? Everything from payroll and uh, HR and benefits and all the uh, the tax filings, everything that has to be done in a detailed financial maintenance way so we don't just descend into chaos and have to start all over again. But, you know, that that quick little. So I see that as the sort of cycle of accomplishment for almost any task, uh, you need, you, you realize very quickly how much you need all four of those talents and approaches if you're gonna be successful for more than a day or two. And if you have a moment, I know we're getting close. There's two questions that popped into the chat. To me, they're very comparable or very similar. You know, are you familiar with predictive index? I know you're well-versed in all the assessments and companies and 
things. And then the Emil's question was compared to other assessments, how much more successful would you say the Berkman is when you know talking about a person's strengths, weaknesses? So maybe we can close on those being fair okay. to your time. Yeah. Well, uh, just to wrap up one more time, predictive index is doing really well now and they have a value. Uh, they don't provide the same kind of, it, it's, it, you're kind of talking, um, you know, sometimes depending on the job, you, you, uh, my husband taught me uh, the difference between a Phillips and a, and a common screwdriver, you know, or uh, you might need a different tool. But here's where Berkman is, uh, is set apart from, from all the other assessments, including PI. And that, and, and Strengths Finders, which is useful, some of our consultants, a lot of our, most of our consultants are, are um, certified in multiple assessments because they have to go to where, if, if they go to a particular company, they may request a particular one. And that's fine. But Berkman is the only one that shines a light on these hidden, very, very critical motivators that we call the needs. And that's really, again, I cannot overstress how important that is to the ultimate understanding of ourselves and others, but also if you're talking about careers and and how that person is most likely to be healthy and successful, you don't get that from any other assessment. And you know we say we're well, comparable. Well, they're comparable in certain ways, and I could sit down and say in this way, yes, in that you know they're not our usual what we call our usual how we show up. You can see that on DISC. You can see that aspects of that in Myers-Briggs. You see that in Strengths Finders. You can see just slightly different language, and that's fine. It's good as far as it goes. But I, I can honestly stand here today and say none of them in one 30-minute questionnaire can give you that breadth and depth that we can provide, especially for guiding a young person into college or into the right uh, kind of training that they may need. To, to be a happy, productive, independent individual. Super. Well, I guess with that, that's been a really quick hour, at least for me. And I want to be fair to your time and certainly your role and responsibility, Sharon, and just tremendous and really appreciate your candor here. It's been a, a great call. So I, I really appreciate everybody joining us tonight. I know everyone's always super busy, but it's been super insightful and Again, thank you, Sharon, and, and thank you all for joining us tonight on the client side. It's uh, been a fun hour. So uh, again, very, very grateful. Well, it's been a delightful hour and it has, it felt fast to me, but uh, I, I know I did all the talking. So <laughs> I, like I say, I was hoping, and thank you for your questions. And um, I'm so proud of the work you do and just want to say kudos to all of you who, who work with Jason and care enough to give your children and your uh, young people the gift of as much self-understanding as possible. Uh, we appreciate it. And again, I have a great team, which I'm grateful for and uh, you know, great clients. So this is just all these synergies coming together. And so again, we're super grateful to have the Berkman Career Exploration at the core of our work. And uh, again, thank you so much, Sharon. This has been you know, enlightening for all. So great job and, and your knowledge is super appreciated. <laughs>